good morning, Munir Ajam. Uh, today is the storytelling time. Um, well, let me give you the background first. Uh, over the last few days, we've been writing articles and exchanging messages on LinkedIn on the concept of Agile uh, and is Agile project management. Is it for every project or most project most of the time? Um, obviously, what triggered this is some post and the concept that the, the Pumba Guide 6 edition is introducing Agile in every knowledge area. Now, obviously, um, there are a few articles, so you can go on our blog site and you can find the references and um, follow the discussion if you're interested. You know, the discussion on LinkedIn have reached more than 16,000, 17,000 people already, or views, not people, views. Um, so, um, another friend, uh, Mark Moore, is also writing on the subject, on the concept of Agile. And here we were trying to distinguish between Agile as a methodological approach uh, that include uh, things like Scrum and Kanban and others versus Agile with a small a as an agility or adaptability. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into the debate. You can read on to it. But uh, interesting enough, a couple of days, a couple of nights ago, I was watching a movie called The Imitation Game. And this movie supposedly is based on a book. I forget the name of the book, but it's based on a true story. And here is the story. During World War II, uh, obviously uh, after the fall of France and England was under heavy attacks by the German and the German, German submarine were in the Atlantic Ocean basically shooting down any ship of supplies or food that come from the U.S. because it, initially in the war, the U.S. did not enter the war. And uh, obviously, uh, according to the movie, uh, one of the edge the German has is that uh, their encryptions and machine called Enigma uh, and the encryption code that uh, the allies, quote unquote, allies could not break these codes. Um, and the idea is that uh, obviously communication was giving them, uh, giving the German an edge in the war, and the UK was under bombardment, and people were getting hungry because no supplies were coming from outside. So the UK government assembled uh, a team of highly qualified mind mathematicians. Basically, they think these are the best mind in England that uh, knows how to break codes uh, and they try to assemble them to work uh, in there, to work to break the code. The problem is, and again, this is, uh, I don't know how much the historic evidence here, but from the movie, is that at midnight, I guess the orders come from Germany to all their um, submarines and military units all over the world for their attacks with information. Uh, the British were able uh, are able to intercept these messages, but they are not able to decode them, although they have got their hand on an, on a, one of those Enigma machines. So the team of mathematicians, basically, at 6 o'clock in the morning every day, they, uh, they get these codes, and they have until midnight yeah, uh, every day uh, to break them. Now, of course, these codes were made where there is like 150 million variation, uh, statistical variation in order or, uh, to, to be able to break them. So it was an impossible, uh, it was kind of an impossible task and they had like five or six or seven scientists have to work together. Um, and of course every morning and it's uh, mathematically it was not a possible thing for a human being to do. So every day, so they had to work in an agile way yeah, and sprints every day. Uh, less than 24 hour sprint. The code arrive in 6 in the morning. They have to decode them by midnight. Otherwise, all the orders change. And therefore, whatever codes from the previous day are gone useless. So unless they can break it every day, they have no ability to win. Now, one of those eccentrics, uh, <coughs> one of those uh, scientists is an eccentric person called, I think if I'm not mistaken, Alan Turing. And this guy was a loner. Um, 
and obviously uh, so the movie you know probably I can talk also about theme working in themes versus uh, individualistics and things of that nature uh, so obviously initially the guy was working uh, wanted to work alone uh, and his team did not like that because they felt like they're losing because they needed one more brain to help them decode and they have only 18 hours to solve these codes and he was not participating he was not a team player and they want him to kick him out of the team and so on and so forth. Um, however, the guy felt like, look, Enigma is a machine. The code, uh, there are, you know, millions of possibilities. So it's almost in his mind impossible to solve by, by, uh, by a human. So we have to think, instead of thinking as a human, I have to think as a machine. Maybe only a machine can decode the machine. So... He had to follow traditional project management. Obviously, these are my words now. This is uh, not in the movie. Yeah, which is to design, obviously to analyze the situation and to design, uh, fund, uh, build, and operate a machine. Now, obviously, uh, they did not believe him and military structure and order and said no you have to work with the team you have to follow order that's not acceptable and he ignores them and designed the machine uh, sorry he did the design but he needed to build it so he wanted a hundred thousand pounds and of course they refused him and they pretty much told him look go back and work with the team or get out so he went over the commander and he went to the prime minister and apparently he got the funding and uh, he was made as the head of the team and they did go through the design they built the machine and finally uh, he was able to uh, to become to work with his colleagues uh, through an assistant of another scientist anyway to make the story short he basically they built the machine initially it didn't you know it kept cranking and cranking and cranking it didn't give any result but finally, you know, after uh, a few uh, uh, adjustments to the machine, and basically it ended up working, and they were able to break the code. And uh, to make a story short, according to the movie, um, this, this work uh, and the creating the machine, that called Turing machine, and the... Uh, uh, and I think this was supposedly uh, like one of the first computers, uh, helped end, to end uh, the war maybe two years earlier than it should have, and saved 40 million lives. This is according to the movie. Uh, the moral of the story, back to project management. Uh, in this case, Agile, you know, having the ability to go through various iteration on a daily basis, it didn't work. Obviously, Agile is not necessarily daily. It could be sprint of one week or two weeks. That's beside the story. But the concept of Agile, the concept of being able to run and do things in a short time and to produce something that is of value. That's the key concept of Agile is to produce something of value. Those 24 hours iteration or 18 hours iteration did not work. Yeah. Only in this case, the traditional approach for managing project works because they have to go through uh, analysis, design, building a machine. And of course, you're not going to get any value until the machine is built. So until the project, in this case, until the project is complete, yeah, there is no value and there is no value on the output. Um, so yes, uh, in the end of the day, um, I, we can give stories about Agile, where Agile works and where Agile it doesn't work. The key message that I close with in this video, Agile is good, like the PMP or IPMA or like any other concept is good, has value in it. However, it's not for most project most of the time. Thank you.